and it's loud. Yeah, and it's loud. Don't need that. All right. So tonight we've got um, the book of James. Well, not the book of James. Uh, James the disciple, also called James the Just. Um, and what's interesting is uh, when we look at James. Uh, and then in relation to the, the book of James, there's actually some argument on who the heck he really was. I guess I always took it to be James, the brother of Jesus. But there's actually some contention, some argument about that. And so um, we know he was an early leader of the church. Um, and we know that this James died as a martyr uh, in 62, 69, something like that. We know that. But uh, what's interesting is, so first of all, for the Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox, as well as some Angelicans and Lutherans, uh, they talk about the fact that James, along with others named in the New Testament as brothers of Jesus, were not the biological children of Mary, but were possibly cousins of Jesus or children from Joseph's first marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we have no documentation that he had a first marriage. And mm -hmm. I mean, everything we have says, you know, these were the, this was Jesus's brothers, but um, there are still some denominations and, and religious groups that say that mary was a virgin all the way through her life too and well and, would that have made james then a half brother well that's that's the potential that is okay. one of the things they kind of um work around um they say well maybe he was a half brother and so they just call each other brother so i, I don't know um but i thought that was interesting i guess i really hadn't thought about there being much of an argument, but um, so I found that there are possibly three different Jameses. Mm -hmm. Three Jameses in the Bible. Right. Yeah. So three. We have, yeah, three. Uh, what, so what, specifically looking at the book of James and who the author is. So the first James was the brother of John, the son of Zebedee. Yep. And, and along with Peter and John, he was a member of Jesus's inner circle. Uh, so we know him. So we, we accept him. We know him. We recognize him uh, as the disciple. Um, so there's no question that that is the James we talk about when we talk about the disciple. Um, we're talking about that one. Uh, he would have been, you know, again, he was part of the inner circle, the inner group uh, that kind of hung out with Jesus and, and really connected with him. Uh, his mother was Salome, and he and John were usually mentioned together. Uh, what anybody remember what their nicknames were? Sons of Thunder. Sons of Thunder. Yes. Oh. Yep. Sons of Thunder. Mm -hmm. Sons of Thunder. They were referred to as Sons of Thunder. Yep. I can't pronounce the other word they call them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to butcher it. <laughs> but. Um, he was all, he was called James the, the the just or James the younger, because apparently he yeah. was pretty young. Um, he was the the youngest of the disciples potentially. Yes. So um, so that's where we have this James. Uh, the <coughs> let's see. James and John. Well, there was the, another James. Uh, I'm sorry, this was the James the Younger, and his mother might have been Mary, and some think his brother's name was Joseph, and uh, Calvin, who uh, the, the Calvinist um, study, he is, he said that this is who he thinks wrote the book of James. Then our third one is the one uh, that we talk about as James, the brother of Jesus. Um, 
and I'm kind of going off track here a little bit because we're not really talking about the the James that is the disciple, but I thought this was really interesting and I, I wanted to share it with you. Um, so tradition has it, they became a follower only after the resurrection. And according to Paul, Jesus appeared to James before he appeared to the larger community. According to Acts 1-4, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers were among those who were gathered in prayer while awaiting the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Um, he was a big mover in the early church. And of course, this would uh, be significant for his relation to Jesus himself. Uh, he wrote the letter that Paul and Barnabas carried back to Antioch. Um, so, you know, this is where we're kind of getting all these different pieces together. So going back to the disciple James, any, any kind of thoughts on any of this? And, and like I said, I kind of went off track here a little bit, but I thought it was really interesting because I never really realized that there was any kind of conflict or disagreement on who wrote the book of James. Uh, I just always took it to be James, the brother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. but, that's what I always thought. That's, I mean, I <clears throat> always thought that. And so after doing a little research, like I said, I saw there's some, some disagreement there, uh, potentially. So any thoughts on James before I go in my next few pages of notes? <laughs> Come on, Wayne, you usually got something. Uh-oh. We muted. lost him. Yeah, you're muted. There we go. There you go. I did it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I I thought there were three Jameses mentioned in the in the in the Bible, James the brother of John, right? Another James that was in with uh, Nathaniel and Thaddeus yeah. and all yeah. that group, yep. And then James the brother of Jesus, right? And that's what I'm talking about. And and right. the, the 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 middle one I didn't mention that he was he little was, John, little James, right. yeah. little James. So yeah, there were three different James, and I knew that, but I guess I didn't realize that there was any question as to which one of them had written the book of James. Um, that was kind of where I was kind of surprised. Um, now, I'm still going to go with the fact that I believe it was. The, the, well, I'm still not, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm open to, to, you know, changing my mind. But until I get some really good evidence, I'm kind of sticking with that it's Jesus's brother. Um, if the question comes up. So. Okay. So any thoughts, any thoughts on James the disciple? And then we can go back and check out James, uh, the, uh, the book of James, if you want. <coughs> no. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, can you imagine being uh, uh, the brother of Jesus. I mean, whether or not he was the older brother, younger brother, it doesn't matter. Um, can you imagine being the sibling of Jesus? Um, because that would be, yeah, that would be really difficult to connect with because, you know, you saw your brother at his worst, usually. Um, and so, even to see, say, you know, my sister said it was kind of weird to see me preach the first time. Um, and much less, I mean, I'm nowhere near Jesus level. And so I can't imagine seeing that connection. Obviously, I'm sure Jesus uh, uh, was already different as he was growing up, but still they were siblings. And so I would feel like there would still be conflict. There would still be, you know, headbutting, that type of thing. Because, I mean, you're brothers. You're family. That's kind of what happens. So I just thought that was, I can't even imagine or connect with that. And I guess to me, that makes sense why it would 
take till after the resurrection for him to really kind of fully connect with it or well i guess he didn't if he if he was one of the disciples he would not have been uh, after the resurrection it would have been before that but still it would have been interesting to see and i'm sure it maybe took him a little extra longer to connect with it to really mm -hmm. do that but by the same token he was the inner circle too so i don't know i don't know any thoughts on that because i just thought that i don't know I well we're having brothers it's hard to think about him as a child running around playing with his brothers was he always different you don't right know whether he was you know so, and how to think about it i mean and, and if you think about this you go with mary being you, you said mary was still a virgin all the rest of her life never had any other children yes <laughs> uh, but then why does it, you know, in Matthew and in Mark and all they say, and all of it, and they name him brothers and all of his sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I don't agree with it, but. And then, and then in Galatians, which I'm reading right here beside it, it says in Galatians 1.19, it says, then after, or it starts at 18, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas or Peter and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles. Only James, the Lord's brother. Yeah. See, and like I said, I, I, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm just saying that this is some additional information I found. Um, and I, I remember a, a quote. I don't remember it exactly, but there was a quote, and they were talking about, uh, uh, you know, Mary, the miracle of Mary having Jesus. And, of course, yeah. she was not... Uh, she was a virgin when she, you know, conceived and until after uh, Jesus was born, her and, and Joseph did not consummate the marriage. And they said, you know, that's a miracle. Uh, that I can believe. The fact that there was a married couple for how many years and they never consummated their marriage afterwards, that I can't believe. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it just... Is it possible? Yes, it is possible that they didn't, but there, there's just points to too many things besides the fact of human nature that I would struggle with saying mm -hmm. that she was a virgin her whole life. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm not saying that James wasn't a, a half brother or stepbrother or whatever. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I don't believe that Mary was a virgin her whole life. Uh, well, somewhere it says that um, uh, his brothers didn't believe in him. Yeah. It's in one of the Gospels. Right. Uh, yeah. Jesus' <laughs> brothers didn't believe in him. And uh, because that goes back to that, uh, you can't be a, uh, a, a prophet, prophet in your hometown. Yeah. Well, yeah, think about when in uh, in the Gospels, I can't remember exactly where it was, where Jesus went back and they tried to throw him off the cliff. I mean, uh, you know, it's it, that same idea that it would be difficult to connect that with because it's, well, he can't be the Messiah. That is Mary and Joseph's kid type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't click because you you're too familiar with that person and when you elevate somebody to the point of messiah um there are certain standards that you feel like they have to have and especially during that mm -hmm. time period they already had this overblown um idea of what the messiah looked like the messiah was going to be a great conquering king they were expecting a warrior. Um, and of course, Jesus was not any of that. He was the son of a carpenter. Um, and so to, to think of him as a great, great king, a great Messiah that they were looking for, it just didn't make sense. And so it was impossible for them to connect that. 
Right. right. That makes sense. right. And that again, it would be that much harder for, I would think, siblings, because yes, yes, you know, looking at at Jesus and saying, "Well, he can't be the Messiah." Um, you know, we took a bath together. Um, yeah. you, know, that type of thing, you know, it's just that idea of being the brother of the Messiah would not. It just wouldn't be possible, uh, brother or sister, whatever. Mm-hmm. It, it wouldn't matter. It, a sibling of the Messiah just doesn't seem possible. Even if Mary told them, I, I would think it would be difficult um, to to really, again, connect that and make that solid. Well, and Mar- Mary wouldn't have tried to explain a virgin birth to the rest of her kids until the kids were much older, I wouldn't think. Right. You know, what what kind of what kind of words could she say to help explain to a eight or ten year old? I mean, it'd have to be older. Well, but see, even even at that point though, we're we're looking at them now or in the time period here where they would have been older. And so they would have understand understood that concept. Right. Actually reconciling it with Jesus would be very, very difficult. Weird. It would be. Yeah. A mother having that conversation with her kids. Mm. <laughs> mm. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's it's hard yeah, enough. Because, because what Jesus was, it would be a little more believable. Than if it had just been normal like the rest yeah, of them. But going with what Paul said, and you're what you're talking about is in John 7, 3, 5. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, where his brothers didn't believe in him. They did they yeah. thought he was weird. Uh-huh. You know, so mm-hmm. Which you are? even with, with you're saying if the, the faith that Mary had, they don't care. They don't believe. Mm-mm. Right. I mean, so it would be hard, but I have to. I, yeah, I don't agree with the Catholics that Mary was a virgin yeah. rest of her life. I'm sorry. Yeah, there, like I said, there's a, uh, there's a number of denominations that still teach that. Um, I yeah, did the okay, um, I, 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 it just, I, I just don't see it as possible. Um, again, I'm, I'm looking at simply human nature. I, I don't think it's really possible. And of mm-hmm. course, it, in nowhere... Yeah. In scripture, does it say that God told them that they had to, to you know, not? Um, it just, the prophecy said that they they were going to wait till after, or scripture said they waited till after she gave birth. birth. Um, and that's really it. It never says, and then they never consummated their message, their marriage ever. It just said they didn't consummate it till after she gave birth. And I would have thought that would have been maybe something to write about. Um, Because if we're already writing about it Mm -hmm. to some degree, you'd think that would be added in. But so here's here's another thing that that would prove to you that his brothers were not. They weren't on uh, board. Do I? They weren't on board. Yeah, because when he was being crucified, who did he give care, care of his mother to? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He didn't Good give it to his old. He didn't give it to the next brother in line, who could have been James or could have been anybody else. He didn't, he didn't give him to James. He didn't give him to yeah. anybody, somebody. You know, so even his brothers didn't believe in him back then, and he. he so. Well, and and it's also interesting that he didn't really keep in keep in line with tradition in that instance anyways because remember when um he was preaching and they said hey your mother and brothers are here um who are and he's like well these are my brothers and sisters right here um and so Mm -hmm. he wasn't he he bucked tradition on that take too because we have to remember that in the jewish culture it was very very important you were called upon to take care of the elders. 
and so uh-huh. he he would have and that and that yeah i mean you were responsible but, but at a young even but to give him that point there even at a young age if your brothers are giving you a hard time and your sisters are giving even though you're the eldest and they're giving you a hard time it's like you know i'm gonna go outside i'm gonna kick the dust off my shoes and i'm gonna walk on down the road because the only one that followed him was his mother and he took care of her yep and that's mm-hmm. and he passed yes. her to somebody yes. who would take care of her good point and, and can you can you imagine again I, i'm looking at it from a sibling point of view Jesus is going to go out into his ministry and mom's following him. Mom, what's your deal? You know, um, you always said he was special, but come on. (laughs) That would have been very weird too uh, for her to see your mother go and follow along behind him. Um, Mm -hmm. And for him to be preaching and, uh, you know, Hey, where have you been for 40 days? Oh, I've been out in the desert fasting. Uh, was uh, uh, Mary, Mary following Jesus around? Did Mary, I can't think, uh, was Mary at Jesus' baptism? <laughs> no. It doesn't say. Now, we, we talked about that just last week, that there was... Okay. Uh, we there talked was, about it that it said it was just G, John and Jesus. Okay. Everybody yeah. else, there was no one else around when he was baptized. It was it was a very hmm. private ceremony. Well, uh, so there was no acknowledgement that anybody else was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Well, that's when she was home raising kids. Because yeah. that's when, after uh, <clears throat> Jesus was baptized, that's when Satan tempted him for right. a month or two. Mm-hmm. And, and so then, then he came back, and uh, what followed was the the wedding at Canaan, which was the first, right. first miracle. Mm-hmm. So it, at some point after he came back, he connected with mom again, reconnected, and they went to the wedding. Right. Uh, he brought some of the disciples right. with him, and they went to the wedding and hung out. And Jesus performed his first miracle. Uh huh. So yeah, it's. So at what point did James jump in? You know, because we see that 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 name is listed. So his this James is not his brother. Uh, that's the disciple, right? Right. Because it's, I say so. I mean, that's what I think. In the end. It, it could be because it's James and John. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is not his brother, obviously. We know that he came into, or the suggestion is that he didn't believe into in him until after the resurrection. Then he becomes a big leader in the church, uh, writes the the book of James, which was, of course, a letter. Um, and this is what was carried forward and considered, you know, obviously canon uh, because it's in it's in our, our scripture. It's in our Bible. So. Where does this James go to? What what else what happens? He was one of the important inner circle ones. Any thoughts? Okay, I just hit a what do they call that? A, 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 in Excel, when you have a circle, it just oh. goes around. Uh, the formula yeah. keeps you know. There's a name for it. I forgot what it was. I was reading through here. It says so. How did James become the pillar in the church, according to Galatians 2, 9, if he didn't believe in his own brother who was actually the Messiah? Okay? Okay. Then when I go to Galatians 2, 9, and I read, when James, Peter, and John recognized as pillars of the, and acknowledged the grace that had been given to me, 
They gave the right hand of the fellowship to me and Barnabas, agreeing that we should go to the Gentiles and that. Now, they just confused me with James. Now we're talking about James, the brother of John. Right? I believe so. Mm -hmm. James, Peter, and John. That's three. That's, that's three disciples. Yeah. That's, that's the main three. That's the big three. That's the inner that's circle. The big three. <clears throat> the other one talking about James. But James, James, but okay, but this says this is what I'm. Well, well, it refers to that. Yeah, it refers to that verse. Yeah, it refers. To, I lost it. Where to go? <laughs> Whoops. I, just uh, I did. I was just reading that, and I was like, "What happened? <laughs> you know, where where'd that come from?" Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know. That and that's what's interesting is so. According to some of the history, he was martyred, of course, um, and thrown off the temple. Uh, in fact, yeah. he's thrown yeah. off the pinnacle of the temple. So they made sure they went all the way to the top. Um, they didn't want to. They wanted to make sure he didn't. He didn't make it. Uh, but again, which James are we talking about? Because really, I, I think. I think we can agree that uh, it's either James, the brother of, of John, or James, the brother of Jesus, that we're talking about. I think we can agree that with that. The third one, I think we can move away from, as is probably not the the James that was. Yeah. Born. I think we can agree with that, but you know. Which of them is it? Because as you already found out, Wayne, it seems like they bounce back and forth between these two Jameses. There's no real good identifier to indicate which is which. I mean, First Corinthians three or First Corinthians fifteen three. I think that's what it is. We get there again. Yeah, first first Corinthians uh fifteen three through seven. Okay. For I passed on to you as most important what I also received. For I pass on to you as most important what I received. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised. So what does this not tell me what I need? Oh, yeah. And then he appeared to over 500 brothers at one time. He rose on the third day, according to scriptures, and he appeared to Peter, then to the 12. Okay. Okay, but he appeared to Peter and then the 12. So we've, we've gained one somewhere. Now we have 13 <laughs> disciples. I mean, we gained two because we got to replace... They had to replace uh, Judas. 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 Then he appeared to over 500 brothers at one time, most of them still alive. <laughs> but some had fallen on the sleep. <laughs> then he had been to all the apostles. So they're saying this is when James became a believer in Christ, yeah. when he saw his brother come back to him. Well, and there's actually some um, notes. Now, this is coming from the Gnostic Gospels. There's some notes that say that James was actually given a special revelation, uh, a special message. Um, and again, when we look at some of the Gnostic Gospels, it says that um, James was, of course, like the first bishop of the church and that Jesus himself had directed them to go to James next when he leaves to be kind of uh, the next guide. Now, again, this this comes from the Gnostic Gospels. So I, I'm not saying yeah. that they're exactly right, um, but there is some history, some acknowledgement of that. Um, let's see, what else? Now, there's another note that says he was stoned to death, uh, but it could have been the other James. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we don't know there either. And so, again, although he was 
that the, the James the disciple, although he's one of the inner three, we don't get a lot of information about him. Mm -hmm. There's not a, a lot. Um, we know that he was not the brother of Jesus, which we actually have more about simply because of the book of James. Uh, but still, again, we don't have a whole lot of personal information about him. Mm. We just have his writings. His writings. But then there's some contention there, uh, it, some additional contention on who wrote it, because the person who wrote the, the book of James, which of course was a letter, uh, was articulate. And there's some argument that says, well, the son of a carpenter or, or a fisherman would not be educated enough to write something that well put together. So, uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, here's my thing. If this is James's brother and God is, okay, he didn't believe James, then, okay, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. God created, Jesus was born without conception from a human, okay? Correct. Heavenly, you know, grace. Yep. So you don't think he would have the power to say, okay, I can make James articulate if you want him articulate? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not arguing. Him to that. speak well and write well? I mean, so it, it, I don't have, I don't have, I don't trip over that. I don't have a hard time believing that there's a son of a carpenter or a son of a fisherman that all of a sudden can be eloquent and can write extremely well as long as he's, you know, Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not arguing that. No, at all. I'm that just, was just that was just an extra note that I thought was interesting. Well, I mean, look at it from the perspective of the uh, the day of Pentecost, when all of a sudden they were speaking in languages they didn't know. I didn't mean, it's, know. it's it's the same idea. <laughs> you got a problem with that one too? Yeah. So you know that that idea that if they if they were suddenly blessed with knowledge of speaking different tongues how come you know his hand can't be blessed to write a beautiful letter that needs to be written uh, yeah i i don't i don't agree with it i'm just saying that that is one of the arguments about that the book of james um but again that's looking at things too much from an intellectual side of things rather than looking at things from a faith side which is the intent of the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, it, we can look at logic to an extent, but at some point we have to let faith take over. Um, take over. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, my, my uncle asked me one day about the Bible. He says, why do you, why do you believe in Christ and in the Bible? I, he says, how do you get any understand? What do you, how do you, why do you think Think it's right i said well the first thing you're gonna to have to do is read the first sentence of the first page of the bible in the beginning there was god and if you can't believe that don't worry about the rest of it that's well, right that's, that's right yeah you know i even got my son-in-law which is a agnostic whatever you want to call him yeah you know he's a physics person he believes in the big bang theory and one day i got going to him and going to him and just kept saying well how do you know that what uh, who did gravity? I lost his name. The physician, the, the physics person that was... Ah. Anyway, how do you know his theory was right? The big famous... You know, how do you know? He says, well, sooner or later, you just have to have faith. And I said, exactly. And he said, oh, I didn't mean that. But and then my daughter says, but you said it. Yeah. Right. He wanted to be a minister when he was in the yeah. seventh grade. Sooner or later... You just have to have faith in what you believe that is mm -hmm. correct. Yes. That's yes. absolutely true. We All of these different things that we take for granted, um, you know, you, you look at, we, we have faith that Einstein knew what he was talking about. That's what I, I was thinking about Einstein. I, you know, I, I'm nowhere near smart enough to even think about arguing anything that he wrote. But I believe that he was right. I mean, we trust mm -hmm. that he's right. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same way with faith. We have to put our faith in God 
uh, the creator of the universe. I mean, if you create something, you have pretty much absolute control over it. So you can do whatever the hell you want. Um, you know, it's, it's just trusting <laughs> that it's happening the way that he wants it to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, that things are moving and being put in place from the beginning to be exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's just that's part of it, uh, and if you, at, I think I actually said it last Sunday. Um, at some point, you have to put uh, logic aside and take things for faith. Uh, take it by but, faith. Yeah. Uh, to to add to it, though, once you have the faith, then the knowledge can come. Uh, and and it, but it's that knowledge is given through your faith, through the filter of faith, and so you carry it through uh, even more so. Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I just got him, so I passed him on. <laughs> but but it's it's that idea that we have to at some point, yeah. It, it's like the Apostles' Creed. Um, the Apostles' Creed, which, of course, I'm preaching on, uh, the Apostles' Creed is the basic bare bones of Christian faith. But we don't stop there. We get deeper. We get more knowledge. We get a stronger faith through growing and expanding. Uh, you know, it, it's... Yes. You don't just stop learning. Um, and to some extent, it changes what you've already taken in. So it, it's like looking at math. When you're, when you're young, you start with, with addition. Two plus two equals four. Okay. As you get older, you work into multiply, multiplication. Uh, two times two equals four. That doesn't take away from two plus two, it just expands it. Mm -hmm. So in the same way with our faith, uh, we, we learn the basics, but then as we grow, we learn more. It doesn't take away from what we knew already. It just expands on it, makes it deeper and a strong right. connection. Right. Uh, <laughs> and so we, we have to grow it. And some, to some extent, sometimes it does change it though too that we look at the way god handled things in the old testament and through the the first covenant he did things one way but when christ came that with a new covenant things did get changed things were handled differently it was no longer by works that you were saved it was now by faith um, and, and that mm -hmm. goes back to the logic yeah. idea. You know, yeah. the the early yes. the early Jewish people were trusting in their works. Uh, they were following it basically with logic. And so, at some point, it had to be changed to going into faith. And it goes back to the idea of James, uh, the even let's talk yeah. about the brother uh, that his logic, his screening parameters for the Messiah <laughs> didn't work for Jesus because he couldn't wrap his head around Jesus being the Messiah because it was his brother. You can't, his brother mm -hmm. can't be yeah. the Messiah. No, it just can't be. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> well, it's and, and to to make it a really creepy, really creepy uh, change to it, it. It's like when you when you uh, read about somebody who did like a horrible crime, and the people say, you know, his yes. neighbors, their neighbors are like, oh well, I can't believe it was that person. That that that's not them. That's not possible. Um, they were always so nice and polite. And uh -huh. it was the same idea that 
the face that they showed us or the face that we chose yes. to see may not be who they actually are. Right, right. And so James saw Jesus, the brother, when in actuality, yes, he was Jesus, the brother, but he was also Jesus, the Messiah. Yes. And yeah. So, Again, it was yeah. a, it was a struggle for him to reconcile that idea. Uh -huh. Yes. Yep. So it seems funny that the siblings, whether brothers or cousins or, or whatever, whatever you want to classify them as, had a hard time believing. So where was the leader of the house? Where was Joseph for all this time? What was he doing when his children were not believing what he knew to have happened? See, and we don't know. Right. And that's that's the problem because part of part of the issue, I think, is the fact that we don't get told what happened to Joseph. Because at the age of 12, when Jesus was in the temple, that was the last we hear of Joseph. Yeah. We don't know when he disappeared. After yeah. Obviously, it's pretty well accepted that he passed away. Uh, he didn't just leave the family. But when did that happen? And so was he really around for that point uh, when, when, you know, this whole thing was coming forward? Because we have to remember, too, that when they talk about uh, Jesus – going off and being in the temple and Mary and Joseph coming back, no mention is made of any other siblings. It, it doesn't mean uh -huh. that they weren't there, but there's no mention of them. Mm -hmm. So was he, he had to have been around potentially to um, help in the baby making, but after that, was he around enough to help teach? and to guide we don't know well we, we know we know that age of 12 that's basically the last to hear of joseph but then there's nothing till jesus reaches the age of 30 i don't know the age of the other kids and when they were born or anything but there's still there's quite a quite a period of time that uh, Joseph could have been fathering other children. Correct. Correct. Um, now, that would have been somewhat odd for there to be that big a, uh, of, of a gap between siblings, I would say, for that time period. Yeah. I would have thought that would be unusual, but it's certainly possible. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we don't Again, we have no documentation. Right. We have no knowledge whatsoever. Uh, so we don't know how it all was connected. No. It's just it's just not shared with us. No. It's not it's not out there. So I I really I don't no. know. No, we just don't know. We don't know. No. Here's one for you. Okay. John 642. Okay. Well, I'll wait till we get to it a little bit. I haven't got to it yet. I just looked it up on that. John. Six. 42. I like this Bible. <laughs> I like this app. It says, then were, they were saying, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? And how can and how can he now say I have come down from heaven? And they're they're still speaking of him in the first person. Mm -hmm. The writer of John, which was John. Right. So John's still referring to Joseph in the first person. That is interesting. Yeah. Right here. Right here. They were saying. Huh. That's good a good point. point. That is a good point. Well, it's wonderful to be on the internet, get the internet. <laughs> you look things up real quick instead of having to sit here and flip this one. I know that's, I, I didn't.
never thought about that either till right there. It's kind of interesting. That is because, again, uh, you would think that it would have made mention of Joseph being around for some of the other situations then. Maybe um, he didn't follow. Maybe he was staying home, taking care of the rest of the kids. You know, the wife's out running around the countryside. Well, but, but at <laughs> least, don't you think he would have been at the wedding at Canaan? Didn't say he wasn't, did it? It doesn't say he wasn't, but he didn't say he was either. No. Nope. So He's I not I, really, was he was he important to the story? Well, no, it, potentially not. You are correct. But it, it's just, it's it's interesting that he's not referenced mm -hmm. um, any other place other than what you just found. Um, so if, if you want to go on through that and, and flip it back to the rest of the Bible, how many times do we hear about the other eight, seven or eight apostles? That's true. You're absolutely right. That's true. We... And, and that's one of the struggles, I think, it because obviously they were all called for a reason. Right. But we don't hear why. Why were they significant? So, do, yeah, why were they significant? Why did they become insignificant? Why is the mo who's the most prolific writer of our New Testament? That's true, Paul. Paul, he wasn't a disciple. You see what I'm saying? He wasn't one of the original 12. So again, so he had to be involved. So he had to be involved somewhere around here. Or did he get this all from one person? Right. Or was it the divine hand of God that says, I've selected you to carry on and do the writing because you're very good at writing and you're very strong willed and you know, it just, it's a good question. One you'll have to remember to ask when you get there. Oh, yeah. Oh, believe me, I got a whole list. I'm sure, I'm sure he's heard them all. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> just hand you a piece of paper and say, go study, my son, go study. <laughs> or touch you on the head, you'll understand, you know. I, I, I figure, you know, when we get there, there's going to be a frequently asked questions list that you just give a date. <laughs> And it's going to probably answer all of these questions and ones we didn't even think of. And yeah. then he's going to be like, all right, if it's not on the list, then come to me and we'll chat. But yeah. And I have a yeah. bill for that too here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just take this. <laughs> now you know. I often wonder if we'll <laughs> automatically know when we get there. Right. Could be. Could be. There are probably things we still won't know, but we won't care. Right. It's true. Right. But it I, won't matter. Because I, everything I, that we get from there will be nothing but makes us happy. Right. Right. Keep us happy. We'll, we'll be fulfilled. So we really don't care about the rest. <laughs> Brandon, I know you will, but you'll you'll be questioning. Well, why are the streets gold? Why aren't they flat? You know, <laughs> See, and that, that's the thing. You know, we're, we're looking when we go to heaven, we're looking for things that bring us joy. And for me, it's learning something new. So I don't want to be given the, all the answers right away. I want, right. I want to figure them out one at a time and, you know, really get a chance to think about them because, you know, that's going to be the, the fun part for me is learning something new. Um, but, you know. Okay. Yeah, we'll get a chance to learn things that we never even thought about learning about. So, the same way, I don't like not to know. Right. Yep. Yep. I like to know the answer too. I just hope we get to talk to all these people that we're talking about. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's I. I've said before. I'll say it again. I want to. I want a chance to sit down and chit chat with Moses. Yeah. <laughs> I think he would be he would be very very interesting. Uh, I would think one day uh, during the flood, yeah, <laughs> like one day at band camp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Same thing. Have you ever <laughs> son, you need to move away from behind? <laughs> Boy, this one time we had water in our basement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now let me tell then you go and yeah. you run into Noah. Let me tell you about water. water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, unless anybody has anything else, we'll go ahead and shut down for the night. We will not meet next week. Uh, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'll yeah, tell you again Sunday. But I, mean, I, could, I could care less about mine. It's Christian's birthday, and so that's oh. that's why we're celebrating. And what uh, is it? 17? 17. He's going to be 17. Not the 18 one yet. Huh? Oh, no. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> it's just a junior. Uh, but, of course, he'll be a senior next year. And we get we get a stack of the college pamphlets, I think, every day now. Oh, so yeah. He's getting all sorts of mailers and things like that. Oh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, Laura and I will see him and we'll say, okay, this one, if you get a scholarship. Otherwise, no. <laughs> if it's not in the state <laughs> and it's not a public university. He said, no. yeah, our grandson's looking, he just got accepted at Purdue. AJ just got accepted at Purdue, but he wants to go to Michigan. Uh -huh. He's got accepted at yeah. Michigan, too. And he lives in, no, not yet. He hadn't heard, oh, of hadn't heard from Michigan yet? No, but he lives in Indiana, so I'm like, yeah, I don't go to Michigan. <laughs> well, that's the... Uh, Said, well, what if I win the lily? I said, well, I don't care where you go then. That's your choice. Right. <laughs> you take your pick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let me pray. Well, then... there's still other things to consider, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know, but so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Money's a big one. <laughs> and money's a huge one. I think he'll be able to get in pretty much any place he wants. It's the money is going to be the whole back. So, but we'll, we'll see. Lord God, thank you so much for allowing us to come together to study your word, to enjoy the fellowship, uh, to just talk and laugh and, yes. and just yes. enjoy the connection that we have. We thank you, Lord God, for your son, Jesus, who gave us everything so yes. that he can be, we can look forward to the joy the joy of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everybody have a great night. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Later. Bye. 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 Bye.